Hello, this is Skyler, and welcome to Java Programming Lesson 6. So far in these lessons, we've only been able to make programs that follow a strict pattern, meaning that when you run your program, it will always print something out, and then ask the user to get something in, and then print something out again. The same pattern. It will not change between runs of the program. Now, this does not make for very exciting programs, and certainly will not work for exciting video games. So now we're going to start working on ways to make the code more dynamic. The first tool of dynamic coding we're going to talk about is the if statement. Now think of if statements as putting up a protective wall around a block of code so that it will only be run if a certain condition is met. So when a program runs into a block of code like this, it first checks to see if the variable x is equal to zero. If x is equal to zero, then it runs all the lines of code inside of the curly braces. If x is not equal to zero, however, it will skip all the lines in between the curly braces. Now take a good look at this screen. It seems somewhat intuitive, if x equals zero, but I've actually shown you the most common mistake made when using if statements. What it should look like is this if x equals equals zero then do everything inside the curly braces in java you must use two equal signs when checking to see if a variable equals a number people make this mistake frequently so try not to be one of them you can do more than just check for quality as well you can also check to see if a variable does not equal a number or if it's less than or greater than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to along with many other functions that you can put inside of if statements that we'll get into later. The last cool thing about if statements we're going to talk about today is you can put multiple conditions in a single if statement using the AND and OR operators. The AND operator is two ampersands and the OR operator is two vertical pipes which isn't a very commonly used key, it's right above the ENTER key. With these operators, you can make very specialized if statements, such as if x is equal to 0 or if x is equal to 1. Also, if x is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 10. And also the last one I have here is if x is greater than 30 but not equal to 42. So you can see very specific if statements that give you a lot of control with how your program is running. So that's enough information to get us started on an example using if statements. And also, while we're here, I'm going to teach you else statements. So you can see I have a really simple program right now. It makes an integer variable called x, and then also a scanner called input, and then it reads in a number from the scanner. And I do nothing with the number after I get it in. I can input a number and nothing happens. So let's, let's do something with it. I'm going to use an if statement so that if the user is really cool and inputs 42, it's going to print out this is the meaning of life. The universe and everything, but I'll, and I figure they know the gist. So you can see this if statement, and then the print statement inside of the if statement, and when I run it, and if I put in 42, it informs me that 42 is in fact the meaning of life. And then if I run it and I put in a number that is not 42, it does nothing. So it would actually be pretty good to let the user know if they didn't put in 42 that they were wrong. So if x does not equal 42, then I'm going to print out this is not the meaning of life. Shame on them, they should know better. So when I run this program, either this or this is going to be printed out because x can only either equal 42 or not equal 42. Um, this is the perfect situation for an else statement. So you can see if I delete this here and type in else, what this line or these lines of code will do is it will first check to see if x is equal to 42. If it is, it will run these lines of code. However, if it comes to the beginning and x is not equal to 42, it skips these lines, sees that we have an else, and will run these instead. So it'll either run this or this, which is perfect. So I can run this and put in 42 still says it's the meaning of life. We put in 123 and it lets us know that this is not the meaning of life. So this is an elf if else statement. The last thing that I can do here is I can do an else if statement in between here. 
And an else if statement works just like an if statement in that you need to have the parentheses after it. And inside of it, I'm going to say if x is greater than zero, then I'm going to print out, oops, I'm going to print out that this is a positive number. Just so that they know, you know, what's going on. Um, but you can see now I have the if, the else if, and then the else. And now let's run this though. And now if I put in 42, 42 is equal to 42, of course, but it's also a positive number. So is it going to print out this line of code or print out this statement? Let's test it. Ho oh, ho! It only prints out that this is the meaning of life because that's what the else keywords do is if this is true, then it will do this and then ignore all of the else's, whereas if this is not true, then it will check the else ifs and then the final else at the end. Um, if I put in a positive number now that's not equal to 42, like 11, you see it prints out that this is a positive number, but it does not tell me that this is not the meaning of life because once this is true, it prints these lines out, hits the else and says, hey, I've already done something else before, so I, you know, I'm done, and it breaks out. So this is the structure of if statements. It's a little bit confusing. You're really going to have to practice on your own time. Um, but I also, before we're done, I want to do an example using a string. So here, I'm going to change these here and put a string. All right. And if I were to ask you to use a program that checks to see if somebody puts in your name, so if x equals Skylar. This seems like the way that you should do it, right? And then I can be like, hey, yeah, this is me. Celebrate myself or something like that. Um, this seems like the way that you would use a string. However, you can see Java is underlining this in yellow. This is a warning. And it won't actually work for us. Um, because the way that you have to do strings is you have to do the name of the string, for us, the variable name is x, a dot, and then equals. And then inside of this, I'm going to put Skylar. So if x equals Skylar, now you see we got rid of the yellow lines, and if I run this, it will actually work. Hey, yeah, it's me. And then if I put in something else, not Skylar, then yeah, it's not Skylar. So it doesn't go inside the if statement. This is kind of a weird exception. As we keep going, we'll definitely continue talking about the string object. It's an interesting one. For now, I just want to make sure that you you know this. Um, and you can use all the logical operators we talked about before. So like if x equals Skylar, or if x equals good sky. I go by that, online at least. So then if I run it, then if, sky, if I type in Skylar or good sky, then it will say that it's me. Well, there you have it. That's everything I'm going to go over with if statements now. I mentioned you have to do this on your own. That's really the only way that you're going to get really good at if statements. A good practice would be to go back to program number five, the tutorial we just did, and um, change it so that instead of always calculating the three shapes area, have in the beginning you type in, or it asks you, to, or which shape you want to get the area for, and then depending on what the user puts in there, it only calculates a single area. That would be a good way to practice using if statements. Um, that's everything for now, though. Thanks for following along so far. In Lesson 7, we're going to continue with more dynamic, slightly more advanced topics. So thank you for following along. You're doing great. We're going to see you in the next tutorial.